Hey, it's Alex and welcome to the Geeks Table. Today we'll be doing some crazy stuff together. This is the Microsoft Surface Pro 7 with a cracked screen that I got for just 200 euros and that's crazy cheap for this kind of a device. And today I'd like to turn it into a MacBook Air with touch and pen support so it could run not only Windows but also Mac OS. Unofficial, of course. Before we start, I should say that this experiment is done just for fun. You should not repeat it unless you want to have fun as well. I am fully aware that there are incredible MacBooks with Apple Silicon that will turn this poor surface into pieces. But they are more expensive and honestly speaking, their design looks less appealing to me. But okay, we will return back to the design and specs later. And first, let me replace the screen on this poor guy. So why the Surface Pro 7, you might ask? There are newer Surface devices out there which are faster and more capable. And that's true, but here's a catch. Apple still supports Intel Max, which it released before migrating to its own silicon. And the CPU in this Surface Pro 7 is of the same generation as those in Intel Max. So as of now, Surface Pro 7 is the last Surface Pro that supports, unofficial of course, the Mac OS. And as long as Apple supports its Intel Macs, we may have updates here as well. Another point is that specifically in Surface Pro 7, Microsoft used the same Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip that Apple used in their MacBooks. And if you ever tried to install a Hackintosh, you know that it's a huge deal, because it means that we'll be able to use Wi-Fi and Bluetooth out of the box without any external adapters. All right, the screen is replaced and our Surface Pro 7 looks almost like new. Now let's turn it on and check the specs. And we're booting into Windows 11 here. So yeah, this particular model is on Core i5 and it has 8 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. And by the way, it has no fan, so it will remain silent, but it might get hot and throttle under some heavy tasks. As for the ports, it has a USB-C and a USB-A port on one side and an audio jack on the other side. And behind the stand, it also has a microSD card reader. But I decided to bring even more fun to our test. So I got another Surface Pro 7. This one has Intel Core i7, 16 GB of RAM and 512 GB of storage. And as I said, this device has no fans, so it's quite silent, but this one has and sometimes it gets noisy. All right, all I need is to install macOS on these machines, use them for a while, and then I'll be back with my results. All right, I'm back and that was quite an experience, I should say. If you want a detailed instruction on how to install the macOS on a Surface Pro 7 device, hit a like, and once I'll get, let's say 100 of likes, I'll make it. So first of all, let's talk about the design. Can you imagine Apple releasing a MacBook in colors of a modern iMac? I would simply run and buy it on the same day. Funny, but I used the iMac wallpapers and they perfectly matched the type covers of these Surface Pros. I'm really in love with this design. Now it's time to check the functionality. What does work and what doesn't? So here we have the touch cover. I like the keys, they are quite comfortable to use, but the touchpad is not as big as in the MacBooks but it works perfectly with all the gestures. I can scroll, I can switch between the desktops, I can view the open apps, I can bring the launch pad, but more importantly, I can do this. It's a fully working touch support on a Mac. This looks so simple, but it's mind blowing. Don't get me wrong, I do think that laptops are meant to be used with the keyboards and pointers, but here and there a touch interface just feels more natural. I can open the maps and do panning, zooming and even rotating, and it's so much better than doing it with a trackpad. But let's do something else. Let me switch to the photo editor and have a look. I can simply operate with my fingers. And if I don't want to do it with the fingers, I can take the Surface Pen and do the same with the pen. Just like this. You know what, let's switch to the OneNote app and try writing there. Well, we don't get the pressure sensitivity here, at least for now, but it's definitely workable. 
The thing is that only a few apps would support handwriting on a Mac because there are no real touchscreen Macs out there, so developers just don't see the point of implementing that. Speaking of other functionality, I should say that all the ports work fine, including the card reader, and actually I took this device no, this device, the i5 version with me on vacation, and it just happened to me that a friend asked me to copy some files on his USB-A flash drive. And I just didn't have an adapter and I didn't even have a need in this because I have a USB-A port here. And also I used the card reader to copy the photos from my DSLR through the microSD card through the card reader to the surface. These are two quite narrow cases, but neither an iPad nor the MacBook Air would cover them out of the box. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth work fine here, thanks Microsoft again for installing the correct chip into its Surface Pro 7. Same for the App Store and iCloud, so installing apps, pairing my AirPods or syncing documents over the internet is seamless. No AirDrop though, but we have the iCloud clipboard so I can still select the files in my iPhone, copy them, and then paste them to my Surface Pro. And as long as they are bound to the same Apple ID, it works like a charm. It's a workaround, but it makes the job done. Overall, everything works surprisingly stable. And I'm saying surprisingly because I tried Hackintosh like 10 years ago with the Surface Pro 2 and, and it was such a lottery. With every reboot, this or that feature just would stop working. Here it works nice and smooth. The only thing that is not and won't be working is both of the cameras. Microsoft haven't made the drivers public, so no chance it will be working on macOS or even Linux. But if I need to have a video call or do anything in the world of Windows, I can simply restart the computer and in the matter of minutes, be on the Windows and launch the camera. But you might ask, you have two systems, how do you share the files between them? So this one has 256 gigabytes of storage, evenly split between Windows and Mac OS, so I use just a huge SD card as a shared storage. But this one has 512 gigabytes of storage, so I just allocated a volume on the internal SSD and it is used for the file sharing. The SSDs on both models are very fast. Of course, now you can find devices with a much faster storage, but these speeds are enough to make the job done. Personally, I never felt that it slows down my workflow. Another thing to highlight is the performance. I wish I had this device a few years earlier. It would have been my favorite. But the presence of Apple Silicon makes this moment bittersweet. So we won't compare it to the latest M chips, that would be a torture. However, running this device on Mac OS does something interesting. I ran the Geekbench test under both Windows and Mac and noticed that the Windows results being much lower. But then it occurred to me that Windows laptops are less powerful when being in a battery. So I plugged the Surface Pros to the power and re-ran the test. And now we got much better picture. A similar case happened with Cinebench. When on a battery, the Windows results are lower for both single and multi-core. But what's even more interesting that when it is plugged in, its multi-core score is still lower than the one done in macOS under battery power. So if I use macOS, I get the same performance both while I'm on the go and while I'm being on a charger. It comes at a cost though. If I just watch a movie on YouTube and both CPU and GPU don't use that much power, I can get up to 4 hours of battery. Which is totally fine if I watch a movie while on a plane or train. But if I do an extensive video editing in DaVinci Resolve, the device gives all its power to deliver the results, and in about 80 minutes the battery will be drained completely. And this is very tight. Concluding this experiment, what can I say? I have always been dreaming of a Surface Pro running Mac OS. The device and the concept itself is just a masterpiece. The type covers of any color look so cool and refreshing, and the kickstand elevates the usability above all the iPads, especially if you are into handwriting. I'm desperately waiting and looking for an iPad stand with such a small angle for making notes, but no luck so far. It's also nice to have USB-A and card reader and the audio jack, and even my own version of MagSafe. 
And while it's easy to beat this device in terms of performance, but when I have to have a light bag, when I need both macOS, Windows, and a device to take notes, I take the Surface Pro with me. It handles browsing, photo editing, watching videos, and even coding. Hell, for 200 euros plus the new screen, which is like 300 in total, it's an amazing device. Hope you've enjoyed my little experiment, and honestly, it was a lot of fun and exploration. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment, hit a like, and subscribe to the channel. It's been Alex, and see you at the Geeks Table. Bye-bye.